Hi, today we're using the primary colors and the secondary colors to create a landscape. We're going to try just using red, yellow, and blue, the three primary colors, and blending them some to make some of the secondary colors to create a, a winter landscape, one where the trees have no leaves, uh, where the sky is vibrant with color, maybe at a sunset or an early morning sunrise. Uh, so I've got an example on the left-hand side of the screen. Your example uh, may not look like this. You're welcome to have some creative freedom with the way yours turns out. This was just an idea that I like for this particular drawing. I'm going to start by writing my name on the back of my paper. Um, anytime you get a poster board to paint on, the side that is not shiny is the side we're going to paint on. The side that is shiny usually has an X on it, and that's the side that you want to write your name on. Later on, after it's dry, we'll sign our name to the front, but in the meantime, if you write your name on the back in pencil, that's going to help us know whose work is whose. So please look for that X and sign your name beside it. Then turn your paper over. We're going to do our painting on the other side. On each person's tray, you have a paper towel and you have some water. That's to clean your brush when you change color. I generally like to start with the lighter colors, uh, like yellow. So I'm going to start by making my sun yellow. I don't even need to wet my brush when I'm working with tempera paints. These liquid paints are called tempera paints. I do need to get uh, just the tip of my paint brush covered in paint. I never want to get it up here on the silver part. And I'm going to start by adding my sun in the sky. Now, the sun and fire is usually painted using the warm colors, yellow, red, and orange. I don't have any orange here. I've got to make some orange. Since that yellow is uh, really light like that, I'm going to go ahead and add some yellow down here at the bottom because I want some yellow, just like the example over there on that side of the screen. And I'm going to also make some green for my grass. My bottom's not going to be as dark as this example. I go ahead and add a lot of yellow in because once you start to darken that yellow up by mixing other colors in, it's really hard, really, really hard to get all the traces of the dark colors out of your paint. Notice all the time I'm just dipping the tip. I'm not getting it up on the silver part of my brush. If I ever do, I want to wipe it off on the paper towel on my tray. All right, so we're going to start making some orange outside of the sun there. By the way, I also have a piece of paper underneath my painting. That way I can paint all the way to the edge. So you see there's a piece of brown paper. I'm going to rinse my brush in the water gently. Try to get all that yellow off of there. And then I'm going to blot it on the paper towel. If I got any on the silver part, I got just a little drop. I'm going to go ahead and roll it off there. Now it's really important that I'm not mixing in the yellow, the red, and the blue in these parts right here. If I have to do any mixing, I can do it over here or I can do it on my paper, which is what I'm going to try to do today. I'm going to try to do most of my mixing on the paper. So I'm going to mix some yellow and red together to make my sun. Those two primary colors, yellow and red, work together to make orange. So that part right there in between the yellow and the red, I'm going to try to blend those together some with some smooth strokes to make some orange. Now I can see already I'm going to have to add some more yellow to that. I suggest working some more with the red and then we'll come back later and clean our brush and add some red to some um, yellow to that red to bring out the orange some. But I do want to go ahead and work some more with my sunset down here. So I've got a good orange happening right through here because a lot of times when the sun sets you see lots of colors or in the sunrise in the morning you see lots of colors so we're gonna have some purple happening down here. I'm gonna save my green for the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my brush. I'm done with the red for the moment. Being careful to dry my brush. By the way, anytime you need to change your paper towel, please raise your hand and call me over and I'll help you with changing the paper towel over. Next up, I'm going to add some blue. Now the blue is the darkest color, so once you start working with blue, it's hard to lighten it up. But I'm going to add some blue in here 
And later on, my sky is going to have a sunset with some blue and some purple and some red in it. I want some lighter blues and some darker blues. I don't want it to be too dark right there in the middle. I'm starting to mix in that red and that blue to make my purple. Same thing here. I can have a little purple happening up there. Oh, I like the way that's turning out. And some real bright, vibrant, bright colors. I didn't want to put my sun right in the middle of the sky. That wouldn't be a very natural looking painting. So I put it a little bit off to one side. And also you'll notice I'm painting all the way to the edge of my poster board. That's why we put that paper underneath, that newsprint paper, to protect our poster board. So please paint all the way to the edge. No white space will be left showing when we finish. And yours may not look so much like a sunset or a sunrise. You may have had a different idea. Maybe you were thinking about the wind blowing really hard during the winter time. And so your painting has movement in it, like wind. Or maybe you were thinking about water when you were painting yours. And your painting turned out to look more like a coral reef with all of its bright colors. That's okay, as long as you're experimenting, mixing together the three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, to make the three secondary colors, orange, purple, and green. And that's where I'm going next. I'm going to go down to the bottom. I want some green grass at the bottom. I left some yellow down there earlier. So I want to turn that into some green grass. And maybe that's actually water down at the very bottom. But I'm thinking of green grass for mine. Maybe you thought of water for yours, so you have an ocean look to it. And I know some people like to think about what happens when you mix all three together. Well, you can get a lot of different results depending on the kind of paint you're using. This kind of paint is called tempera paint. So when you mix all three together, it gives you kind of a reddish brown, almost a purple. Um, it's not the greatest color to work with, but you might find some uses of it. And right now that's what's happening. Right here in the middle, I'm finding out what happens when I mix all three of them together. But I definitely need some green in this because remember our goal is to create the three secondary colors from our three primary colors. So down here at the bottom, I'm trying to add some movement in here. I didn't want it to be all sky. So I'm adding some swirls down at the bottom. That's supposed to be like bushes or trees. And then I'm going to come back and add in some of those trees like we see in the painting and the picture. And I'm going to do that by creating some purple. Let me clean my brush because I want to add in some more yellow. Sometimes I take my paper and wipe it like that. And I want to add some more yellow, both up here at the top, because it's a little bit drier now, so it's going to blend some more. I wanted to make some more orange up here, so I need some more yellow. And I want to make some more green here at the bottom, so I need to mix some yellow in with that too. So after our painting dries, we're going to give it a couple of days to dry. Then we're going to sign our name on the front with magic marker. And we're going to cut some paper snowflakes. Since this is a winter landscape, we're looking out across an open space in the wintertime, we're going to add some paper snowflakes in the sky. Oh, wow. This morning on the way to work at Montlou, I saw some of the most amazing clouds in the sky, too. And they were kind of pink. They looked kind of like cotton candy. I think I want to add some clouds to my painting. Let me 
dry my brush. And to do those clouds, I'm just going to add some pink streaks to the sky. The clouds I saw this morning look so much like cotton candy. They were so super pink. You may not want to add the clouds to yours. The clouds I saw were super fluffy up in the sky. Really amazing clouds. And then I want to add some blue to those to make my clouds pretty purple. Finally, I'm going to try to add some thin trees at the bottom. A lot of trees lose their leaves in the wintertime. Those are called deciduous trees. I like to press my brush fairly flat and get it very flat and skinny and then just use the edge of my brush. I'm not trying to do the whole tree. I'm just giving a suggest suggestion of the tree. So I'm going to use edge of my brush. You may not want to put any trees in yours. That's okay. I'm going to add some trees to mine. I know trees are brown, but with the sun setting in my picture, it's going to be hard to see the details. I'm just giving my viewers, the people that are looking, the idea that there's a tree there. Later on, we might even come back and add in some details with another media, like markers or crayons. I also wanted to just vary the kind of lines that are in my painting. I have some swirly lines for the grasses and the bushes down at the bottom. And I have some smooth lines up in the sky for the rays of light. And then I have some fluffy lines where I touch the painting thinking about clouds. And then lastly, down here at the bottom, I have some bumpy lines to show something kind of like a tree. It doesn't have to look just like a tree. It's just supposed to give my, my audience, the people looking at my painting, some ideas that maybe they're outside. Remember, we're going to cover up a lot of this with our beautiful paper snowflakes. So this painting is just a background. It's not just what our art is about. It's a background. just making sure those corners have color on them. I want every part of our painting to have color on it. No white spaces. So I'm just going around the edge to make sure there's no white spaces. Great. Now one of the hard things about painting is knowing when you're finished. Knowing when you should not add any more to it. That's a really hard thing. Some people get carried away and they keep adding more and more and more paint to it. So only you know when your painting's finished. When you're finished, make sure you don't touch your wet painting. Do not pick it up. Just leave it flat on your table. I'm going to pick it up for you. That way you don't get any paint on your hands. Hopefully at this point, you don't have any paint on your hands, just like I don't have any paint on my hands. Hopefully you've been super neat and clean in doing it. Your brush looks pretty clean. Rinse it out is the last thing you do. Rinse it out. Dry it off. And you're going to leave it flat on your paper. I'll come around and collect all the trays with the paint. I hope hopefully you guys were super neat like I was with mine. It turned out great. And then next week when it's all dry, we'll add the other details to it. We'll sign our name. We'll add our paper snowflakes. Hope you guys enjoyed today's painting project. I enjoyed doing it with you. Hope you have a terrific day.